Hey everybody, Sam here. Welcome back to our channel. Welcome to the beginning of another great video build series. In this video series, in this part, we're going to begin constructing the back deck on our home. One of the requirements we have to meet before we move back into our home or are allowed to move back into our home is that all of our doors, front and back, have a 3x3 landing and stairs that go to the ground. Up front, we did a little front deck. It's about a 7x7 and has some steps. You guys have seen that already. Back here in the back though, we wanted to do something that was more substantial and more permanent. With that in mind, we decided that we wanted to build a 10 by 12 freestanding deck, and then we'll have stairs going off from it and into the woods and you know, to the ground like we need. I say freestanding deck because that is a style we are building and that is a style that you really have to build with a mobile or manufactured home. What that means is that you do not attach this directly to the home. It has to support itself and stand there freely. To kick start this project we need to begin with digging holes in the ground. We have some large footers that we're going to put down here. We're going to be digging holes at least 24 inches deep and using 12 inch diameter footing forms. You guys will see those in a minute to give ourselves concrete footings and bases for a secure long lasting base for this new deck. Let's get started. Ready to go ahead and start building i believe they're called batter boards you take some two foot long stakes and you're basically making a bunch of little miniature football field goal posts all around your place what that's going to allow me to do is then attach strings to these and then move them left and right on my horizontal bar and get the lines parallel perpendicular square and every other kind of geometric phrase you can think of as i want from there we then use the string lines to dig our footers so next up is to hammer a bunch of stakes in the ground, wider and longer than our finished deck so that they're not in our way as we build. And then we'll start attaching string lines. Let's see if that's that long. We are done putting all of our batter boards together and our string lines are parallel to the home and perpendicular to the home as need be. We've also squared up all of our lines and marked exactly where our posts are going to be going on the string lines we've marked them. What we're going to do next is use some concrete stake spikes and transfer these intersections of strings down to the ground, mark a point and give ourselves the locations of the six footers we are going to be digging. Once we have all those six locations pinned or marked on the ground, we're then going to take half of the string lines up, disconnecting one half of each string run, putting them out of the way safely, dig all of our footers, save all those string line positions, because we got to put it back whenever it's time to pour the footers and install our J-bolts and anchors for the posts.
All right, we're ready to dig our footers. And I was not thinking like Angela was thinking, AKA thinking smart. She said, we're gonna use the auger, right? And I'm like, no, 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 it's only an eight inch hole. We need like 14 inch diameter. And she says, yeah, but that'd be a really easy eight inch dead center. And then we could scoop it out easily. She's right. So what I've got here is our earthquake auger. We've had this thing two years now. We bought it back in 2020 when they built our greenhouse way back in North Carolina and we've used it a lot ever since. I hope I'm not about to jinx myself, but this has been one of those tools that's been really handy and has always been pretty reliable. So we're going to start this thing up, move the pins, drill some holes, and hopefully be a piece of cake, right? Press the primer bowl five times. Make sure that gas cap's on. So this kind of gives me a visual about how much more dirt we need to take out. That way I can go ahead and get a shovel and start shoveling it in to shovel it out and get our right diameter. And that's rock card. I see you're wearing your uh, proper footwear, right? Angela's OSHA approved exception here. Uh, always. <laughs> No sooner do you brag on a tool and the tool will break or will fail you. That's the case with the auger. So finishing out these last two by hand. Already did that one. This is the very last footer hole to dig. Right now I'm kind of twisting the tube in place. Gives me my impression. So I know, you know, from here I'll dig out a little bit larger and then here straight down two feet. Okay, that's extra deep, but that's all right.
I have the footers done. The concrete form tubes are in place and they are plumbed by checking level with the top. They're plumb. I don't know, whatever. You know what I mean. They're good. The little baluster cutoffs that I used are just to hold the tubes in place and not let them move around as we dump concrete into the holes. In addition, we decided to cut the concrete forms to 16 inches in length even though our footer holes are at least 24 inches deep. The reason we did that is so that we didn't have to be super plumb and perfect all the way down the two feet and we gave ourselves a little bit of wiggle room. The purpose of the cardboard tubes is just to hold the concrete and not waste it. A lot of times contractors will not hand dig footers like this, will not really use augers. They'll have excavators and dig out a large hole and then use the tube so that only the proper amount of cement or concrete is used for their project. In our case, we dug pretty much a tube in the ground already, so we are just using them honestly for the top portion to give a nice polished top that is level for us to attach our anchors to later and everything else. We are going to fill the entire hole with concrete, and a lot of concrete is going to go down there. It's not going to be a lot of waste, but it's going to work just as fine in the end. I want to point that out in case you're wondering, if do I have to make the cardboard tube the full length? Not necessarily. At least that's this non-professional's opinion. Remember, not a pro. <laughs> Who are you? Box guy. Box guy. <laughs> so over here we have our concrete mixing station. We're going to mix it in the wheelbarrow. Sam got 60 pound bags so they're a little bit easier to lift. We're going to mix it all together. Hopefully not too soupy because we have a lot of rain coming in the forecast. But we're wanting to get these in the ground before it hits. So we're going to mix it here and then go probably like 20 feet this way and put them in the tubes. Right across the middle. Like that? Uh -huh. I, I thought we did this. Oh, that's smart. <laughs> You'll bring the knife over. <laughs> Here, you stand we didn't there, have like one last time. Yeah. Oh. Two. One down, 23 to go. Oh, two at a time? Two bags at a time, yeah. Elijah, you know what this is called? What you and I are doing? No. We are being contractors. One person is working and we're watching. But it's because every person has a job. This is mommy's job. Guys, I made a cool thing. A hole and I can put a styrofoam sword. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, Kill me not being able to see. <laughs> Like that. 
cracking a concrete egg. Kind of is. All right, all three of the footers are done closest to the house. So what we're going to do now is put in our J-bolt anchors. That's what these are. They're bolts that look like the letter J. These are half inch by, I believe, eight inch, maybe six inch. I don't remember. But they're the ones we need to attach our post anchors to when everything is done. The concrete has been sitting for about eight minutes or so. You wait till it gets kind of firm, and then you put these in. Elijah is holding our string line that's parallel to the house, and Angela is holding the string line that runs perpendicular to the house so that I've got my crosshairs for this one, and then I've got my middle mark for the middle one. So, let's go stick these in real quick. All right, that one's good. That one's good. All right, everybody's right? So the first thing you want to do is kind of pat it and get it flat without scraping it off the top. So can we do it like that? No, you can go ahead and here, let me hold, hold it too. Okay. Yeah, we're doing that. Okay. Alright, now you want to tilt your trowel a little bit like that and scrape it across and flatten it. And only go one way. So you go back, sit down, scrape it across. Keep going. Put it on down, put some pressure down because you want it to be down on top of that cardboard. Alright, now just move over to the right and go from this way out. Yep, same action. There you go. Push down. There you go. Push down a little bit. Oop, oop. Yep. And do one. One sweep all the way across. One sweep. Okay, let's see it like that. Now look, see how it's raised up above yeah. the cardboard, even though you're pushing it down. See how it's staying like it's like it's standing up on its own. That's called surface tension. Water and liquids have a certain amount of surface tension, which means they will hold their shape, even though gravity would want to pull them down. It holds it together. So what you're seeing here is the surface tension of the water in the concrete that holds it. That works to our advantage because it curves and creates a little dome at the top to help shed water a lot easier. Cool. There you go. Are 
Are we having fun yet? Yeah, it's not too bad. Sam wanted to buy a concrete mixer, but the price went up $160 in two months. Yeah, that's okay. It's all right. That's what we have family and kids for, right? Although you're not letting anybody else mix, but I mean, that's all right. I'll let you mix every once in a while. <laughs> Ready, Elijah? Yes. Hang on. Just work. Hmm. All right, tell us what you're doing. I'm trying to make sure there's no air bubbles. Good job. Looks good. We're ready for another pour. Yeah. Like It's like a chest plate on it. <laughs> and it easily comes off. Oh, now it looks like a skirt. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> Here. If you put your arms up, will it fit over your shoulders? Put your arms straight up. Oh. Alright, see you later. <laughs> Alright, up. Oh, hands down. That's a nice necklace you got there. It's too big. I'm stuck. You are stuck. You better be careful. <laughs> Here. Let me get arms up. Or down. That works. First we pat it. Mm -hmm. No, no. Just jiggle. Okay. Now we take it at an angle, straight all the way across. Angle, straight across. Do that about five or six times. All the way across. Don't stop. There you go. Looks great. That's it. That's all it is. And then <laughs> I know you want to do more, but that's it. Let's not touch this one. I just want to get these gloops off right here. I could do it. No, I don't want to mess up your work, though. And then make sure my screw heads are sort of exposed. Last thing we'll do because I overfilled it. We'll get this concrete out of the tube. 
be easier to tear the form off later. But you have to tear it off? Well, you don't have to, but I probably will so it looks a little bit cleaner. Off camera, Angela went ahead and set up all of our string lines again while I took the time to hose off and clean off all of our tools so they're clean from concrete. She's got the string lines back out in place so that we can install the last three J bolts here in our three footers that are on the outside most portion of the house. These string lines are not super close to the footers and I wish now that I put them very, very close because I'm really having to eyeball and really get, it's taking more time than it should by putting the J bolts in. If the string lines were closer to the ground, it would be easy. So if you're doing this, put your string lines close. The tarp is not there because of rain. The tarp is there to keep the sun from beating down on that concrete too much. If it evaporates too much, and you got too much heat, it can cause problems. You could have cracking or just problems. So I laid the tarp down on the rows that are exposed to the sun. That way they will hopefully cure properly and correctly throughout the day, today and tonight and tomorrow. The row up close to the house, they're in the shade, so they're good. That's gonna be it for this part, guys. We got our foundations dug, our footers poured and set, and our J bolts put in place. If you have any questions or comments, leave them for us down below. Otherwise, take care, and we'll see you guys on the next one. Bye. Okay. You gotta give me the finger when we're ready. Okay. I don't want to have the nightmare of that video editing. Are you telling me it's eight hours with the front porch? And we still haven't shot the Sam Jabber points. You're rolling, aren't you? We're talking about Sam Jabber points. I have uh, those little, what do I want to say? Oh yeah. This is all pretty much overkill for, no, I don't want to say that either. Ah, come on, what do I want to say? All right, so behind us here, I, yeah, me too. <laughs> um, blah, 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 cut them, so. Back, come on back, come on back. We can talk about reliability if I don't still shard it. There's no real concern. Okay. Yeah, there's concern. Oh my gosh. <laughs> show shard. <laughs> what? Show. I gotta show sharding it. <laughs> I don't want to yeah. see that. <laughs> Can't talk about reliability if I don't show me starting it. Okay. The purpose of the concrete form tubes. They're not concrete. Oh my gosh. Cardboard tubes. Cardboard tubes. Angel found a genius way to hide the trash from the camera shots. You guys are just going to stand on the trash. Construction trash. Not literal trash. The purpose of the cardboard form tombs. Tombs. We're making tombs. <laughs> Welcome to Egypt. <laughs> Break my ankle on a stick. Oh, I got a whole, the whole blooper reel is just when Sam tries to convey his thoughts in verbal communication.